Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down the Atlantic tropics they are getting very active as we have now tropical storm Adalia and as well as Hurricane Franklin that will both impact land one in the United States and then one over in Bermuda I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today and we'll first begin with parts of the Ohio Valley and the Dixie alley and this is where we've been seeing some showers and storms ongoing throughout the overnight hours and now into this morning we've seen some severe weather out of this and more severe weather will be possible later today damaging winds is the main concern this activity will move to the east but nothing too crazy today nothing out of the ordinary just some isolated downburst winds further off to the north in the northern plains pretty quiet up there we have a little bit of shower and storm activity in the upper midwest but it's nothing crazy and even in the central plains fairly dry the northeast is dry back down the southern plains there will be an increased risk for at least some showers and storms later today along a cold frontal boundary that'll be moving down to the south so some cooler air for parts of north texas by about five to ten degrees in comparison to what we saw yesterday and then back down in the southwest united states our massive heat dome is finally retreating down to the south and west but unfortunately a surface-based high pressure system will start to develop back over in the northeast united states this will start to move down to the south and west and then that will start to create more of a drought condition for a large chunk of the united states and we'll discuss more on that here later in this forecast but let's talk more about the tropics and what's happening because there's a lot of activity right now there are three areas that we're watching one of which is really unnoticeable at this point it's a very weak area of development not really expected to develop back over in the central atlantic ocean even if it did develop it's not going toward the united states or land it is moving to the north and then we have hurricane franklin it's a category two hurricane now with sustained winds over 100 miles per hour this is going to be moving toward bermuda this is expected to become a category three hurricane as it moves to the north that would be our first major hurricane of the season and then back over in the northern caribbean sea not yet in the gulf of mexico this system this is adalia it was just named today it is a tropical storm now this will be moving toward florida over the next several days posing the threat of storm surge flooding and as well as high winds we'll talk about what that means here in just a second but let's first talk about franklin franklin again is going to start to take a boomerang turn out to the atlantic ocean it's going to go off to the east no impacts to the united states are expected at least in terms of major impacts there could be an increase of wave height and there also might be some rip currents along the immediate east East coast but there's no major impacts expected no need to be concerned out of this particular system but it will become a major hurricane likely making a very close approach there to bermuda and this will bring impacts like storm surge flooding rains and as well as high winds to bermuda but again no impacts to the united states are currently expected now let's talk more about tropical storm adalia this just formed today and it is really slowly moving it's only moving to the east at two miles per hour you might be thinking it's moving east how is this going toward the united states well it's about to start moving to the north that's why as of right now this is stationary back over in parts of the northern caribbean sea tropical storm warnings in effect for parts of the yucatan and as well as western cuba and we're going to answer the question today will or could this at least become a major hurricane well as of right now the national hurricane center has this forecasted to strengthen more into a stronger tropical storm as we go into monday night it still won't be in the gulf of mexico until probably midnight on monday if not going into early tuesday morning by tuesday morning this is a strong tropical storm as it goes into the southeast gulf of mexico this has a chance to become a hurricane though around that time frame as well by tuesday night the national hurricane center is confident that there will be a hurricane by that point likely a category one hurricane with sustained winds around 75 to 85 miles per hour by wednesday morning this will strengthen further into a category or strong category one possibly a low-end category two hurricane the current sustained wind forecast is 90 miles per hour so that's very close to a cat two there's a very good chance that this does become a category two hurricane as long as everything over the next 24 to 48 hours does happen as forecasted or even possibly exceeds the forecast there's a chance of that especially with how warm the ocean waters are right now in the gulf of mexico the temperature in the water is around 30 to 31 degrees celsius that is very favorable here for hurricane development so we'll have to watch this very closely by thursday this is going to start to ride up the east coast will it stay offshore or will it stay inland is the big question if it stays inland more minor impacts are likely with flooding rains possibly and then also the threat for maybe some gusty winds but if it stays off the coast we could be talking about some storm surge in addition to that higher waves and all that sort of stuff it could be a little bit worse so i'll have to watch that very closely but again the cone of uncertainty is massive and one thing i want to point out this hurricane or tropical storm by the time it makes landfall it could be anywhere in this region the cone of uncertainty is there to make sure that you notice that the eye of the storm could go anywhere in these areas it does not mean the impacts will just be in this circled region so don't get too misled by that we want to make sure you're clear on that that again the eye of this hurricane or storm will make landfall basically anywhere between tampa back through panama city that additionally i want to mention that the current forecast is a high-end category 
one hurricane upon landfall but again there is a chance that this gets to a category two or even maybe a category three hurricane but again the confidence needs to be there there's not enough confidence yet the system is not that organized quite yet and has yet to actually move into the gulf of mexico where there's fav very favorable environments so we have to watch this very closely over the next 24 to 48 hours because it does have a chance to get to a category two or perhaps a category three hurricane upon landfall and we are at the peak of hurricane season and it's in a very favorable environment so we have to watch this very closely now here's the satellite imagery of both hurricane franklin which is back up here just to the east of bahamas and then also we have currently tropical storm adalia very disorganized right now there's a lot of convection it is battling some wind shear which as you know wind shear does not help hurricanes most of the time it usually weakens them and then as this moves off to the north though it will start to intensify in the gulf of mexico with a very favorable environment in terms of its very warm ocean waters all right let's talk about the overall computer models we're going to be in with the european model which has been very consistent throughout this entire process of being able to forecast tropical storm adalia and over the next 24 to 48 hours as we go into tuesday early tuesday this will enter into the gulf of mexico as likely a tropical storm probably around 50 to 60 mile per hour winds notice it's forecasting around a thousand millibars for its pressure which is usually around a tropical storm level anyway once we go into wednesday morning this system really quickly intensifies as it moves toward florida notice 990 millibars that's usually at least a strong tropical storm but usually it's going to be somewhere in the category of a category one hurricane and this is by wednesday morning around seven in the morning we'll start to see heavy rainfall start to enter into parts of western florida once we go closer to around nine o'clock and 12 o'clock in the afternoon so this is 12 p.m wednesday notice it makes landfall with around 987 millibar pressure but again this could be stronger we have to really account for a lot of things including how warm the ocean waters are and how favorable this environment is in addition to this there is a super moon that will be happening on this day of landfall which could increase the tides which could also increase the storm surge which is not good news for the system so if it's category one hurricane it could be bringing impacts like a category three when it comes to storm surge which is definitely not something you want to see with this type of environment again full moon and it's a super moon which makes things that much worse and this will be moving off to the north as we go into wednesday afternoon notice the heavy rainfall and then once we go later into Wednesday into Thursday morning, this moves off to the north and east, and it'll still be posing some impacts in terms of heavy rainfall, and as well as the threat for maybe some storm surge there along the east coast. This is the NAM model, which is showing a very similar look as this moves toward Florida. It will likely strengthen. It does show it more as a Category 2 hurricane going toward the Florida panhandle into Wednesday around 3 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. So it does show a bit more intense. The short-term computer models bring this to a Category 4 or 5, which I don't really expect right now. There's way too much uncertainty really be talking about a category four or five but it's definitely possible that this does become a category three it just needs to intensify and it would have to intensify very rapidly in the gulf of mexico which again is entirely possible that's why i'm mentioning it in terms of the wind gusts upon landfall your pml shows around 50 to 60 mile per hour winds along the immediate coastline perhaps up to 70 to 80 if you're right along the immediate coastline wherever this makes landfall on wednesday afternoon but even inland we'll be talking about wind gusts around 30 to 40 miles per hour so there might be some isolated power outages the nam model showing pretty similar instances as well 50 mile per hour winds near tampa again this will depend or this will be contingent excuse me on this actually going toward the florida panhandle if this goes closer to tampa it would be a different story the highest of the wind speeds would be down there but as of right now the current estimate is that it'll go toward the florida panhandle with around 50 to 60 mile per hour winds on the immediate coastline but right on the landfall area it'll be probably close to around 80 to 90 mile per hour winds but again it really depends on what happens here over the next few days in terms of where this will make landfall and wherever it makes landfall that's where the highest wind speeds will be so here are the spaghetti models this is showing a bunch of computer models on just one plot in terms of where the eye of the storm will go as of right now most computer models have this basically east of panama city by about 40 to 50 miles through tampa so this is really the cone right now but it is a little bit larger in an essence because it very well could go further west or east but again a lot of it depends on what happens over the next 24 to 48 hours because we don't have yet a very defined circulation here back down the northern caribbean sea so i'll we'll have to watch this very closely and then again it has a 50 50 chance of either being off the coast or being inland as it goes towards south carolina and north carolina which makes a pretty important difference in terms of its wind speed storm surge and as well as the flooding rain potential and this is the intensity guide as of now the highest computer model in terms of its intensity is up to a category two there are many other computer models that are not on this that are upwards of a category four or five but i don't really see that happening as of now it's way too early to tell but it's a likelihood at least that this will be a category one upon landfall if not a very strong tropical storm but i do have a confidence there that it'll at least become a category one hurricane upon landfall again to the gulf coast there will be a lot of rain out of the system again it's kind of too early to tell where the heavy of the rainfall will be but we could see some areas upwards of three to six inches of rain here across parts of florida isolated amounts definitely possible to be higher than that and to conclude this forecast let's answer a few questions could this become a major hurricane 
yes it could i'm not trying to panic you by any means but there is a chance that this does with the potential for this to rapidly intensify over the gulf of mexico with a very favorable environment will this become a category three hurricane meaning again a major hurricane it's possible but it's too early to tell again the national hurricane center always is up to a strong category one hurricane right now but it is possible it could be stronger than that we have to watch this though very closely make sure you're watching the weather very closely either on my youtube channel or somebody else's or watch the news just make sure you're staying updated with the latest on this system because it could get very hairy along the gulf coast of florida and make sure you're taking the proper precautions ahead of time before this makes landfall like i'm talking multiple days before this makes landfall it's expected to make landfall on wednesday you should do your grocery shopping or whatever you got to do either today or tomorrow because it will start to get pretty active as we go into tuesday night into wednesday and again the potential for this to become a category one two or three hurricane does exist so make sure you stay tuned we'll keep you posted with the latest